All right, so today I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. Well, I know what I'm going to be playing. What I'm currently doing is Kurnathalus into the Midnight Throne. But what I don't know what I'm going to be doing is... Uh, <clears throat> there, this game, again, I think I had explained in the previous uh, session... It's got its necrotic claws in me, so to speak. And I am struggling to play anything else. Now, normally that's fine. But I have some ongoing campaigns that I really want to get back to. And I just don't know if I can stop playing. <laughs> so, Alex T, good on you, brother. Um... You kind of hooked me on this one. Um, reminds me a lot of Disciples of Bone and Shadow, in fact. Um, but just as a recap to anyone who... Well, this is going to be session two of Kurnathalus Into the Midnight Throne, a single-player co-op dungeon survival game by Black Oath Games. And Alex T over there as a little... A little uh, prolific game designer and um, has come up with this pretty brutal uh, game where you basically stumble around a ancient old uh, necropolis underneath the city of uh, Valeria. I think it's Valeria. Let me uh, double check uh, the what's above. <clears throat> I just want to get that right. The world above, the city of Veldonia, there we go, stands at the heart of the, the Elderworth Kingdom. So that is not important to our character in the slightest, um, but we are currently literally in the middle of combat. And why I've decided to have y'all join me now, I don't know. But... Um, just something of note, um, there's been a few things that I've kind of refined over the, my playthrough. Um, I'm still utilizing my very slapdash uh, a flowchart that still needs to be refined. I also printed out the... Uh, oh lord, what is this? The uh, Dungeon Morph tiles out just so I can have... And I put these here so I can stand them up and lean it up against something. Um, and I've been making uh, uh, condition standees as I get them because I f tend to forget about them. Um, I also think I might start making these, uh, like this one is the uh, you know frightened condition. Um, and this one is the blinded condition. So I've I've gotten both of these so far in this current domain. Um, I'm in the second domain now. Uh, last I last we left last you saw me play, I was in the first domain. I had since explored more of the area, found its overseer, found the exit, went back to the overseer, kicked its butt, um, and then went back to the the domain exit and found a underground tunnel into the next domain. This domain is uh, proving to be uh, kind of like the first one where I didn't roll any of uh, any reduction in the um, in the layer the the uh, the layer uh, check at all and we have an issue where I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to fill out a lot of this um, before I reach my, my this will reach to a D4. Um, so I have some issues with that. I might have to go to the next page to extend this current domain. Um, and I started to print out the, the Overseer basically the domain page separately, um, which seems to be working out a little bit better. It was 
uh, it was a little cumbersome to have it on the back of a character sheet, since this is something that will change as you explore. I also um, reprinted this sheet out on some better cardstock, um, or better paper rather. Um, also one-sided for this, since I see this all the time. Um, but I did print the this basically your items and backpack and stuff your basically equipment page on the back or in the front of this page, which you don't use too much. Um, so that's those are the few changes. Uh, I've also realized I like having this little um, this 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 dice tray here to keep track of well the dice I use, but also keep it in a location that's tight. And because I'm rolling out in front of me like this, it's just easier to put things back on the tray. And to the left of this string of dice, we have the current monster that I'm fighting, which is just represented by this, this Minotaur Mini um, and its current health. This little guy here re represents my armor and its integrity. Um, right now I'm wearing full plate, or not full plate, full, full suit which means that I only need one dice for that. This chest uh, implies the the layer uh, ten the the layer dice uh, and the uh, the exit die check and this little standee r represents the tension. Um, so with that in mind, every time I go into a new room, I roll these two plus reduce my my light source down by one. Um, so I have gotten to level two since we last, uh, saw, and I finally named my character, um, Aro Damien. So Aro Damien, last we saw him, he was level one, um, now is level two with, uh, 15, a little over 1500 XP, which is great. He has since defeated an overseer, and because I used a personal goal, of defeating a an overseer, I got an amulet, and I rolled a new mastery uh, of having the Umbra Phantom, which gives a passive plus 10 magic resistance and plus 5 sanity, which is great. Um, and now my magic resistance is 54, which is awesome, because I have a plus 10 magic resistance uh, with the, the new mastery. And I also have on, uh, I found some magic item. I found a magic item. I don't know if I've, if this was in the last session or not, but it gave my character plus 20 magic resistance and also plus nine toughness. Um, so this was awesome. I named him, named it the gloves of the battle mage. Um, and with that, it brings our magic resistance. Um, ooh, actually, yeah, plus 20, 34, ooh, max. Anyway, I think my magic resistance should be higher. I'll do the math on that later. Uh, but my toughness is 28 out of 19, and magic resistance is 54 out of 34. Um, my aether, unfortunately, is 11 out of 14, because in the growing darkness for this particular domain, I've had some pretty bad things happen. I, I rolled up, I've, I've had to roll the tension die so many times because I don't have any lockpicks and my thievery skill is pretty low anyway, but I don't have any lockpicks and I, for, um, I had run into a couple traders in the previous domain, but just straight up forgot to purchase lockpicks as even an option. Um, and uh, so I have Dull Mind active, which is minus 10 to all non-combat rolls, which kind of sucks. I have Shaking Hands, which is minus 1 to camp checks. And the Aether Drain was from a Drain Spirit. So right now I have minus 3 max Aether. And I don't know if this goes away when I leave this domain, um, or if it's just standard as is going forward. So I don't know about that. And then I had a one-time um, 
resolve check that I failed and I lost sanity equal to the amount of active uh, a growing darkness events, which was three. So my sanity is now 13 out of 16. So um, I'm still really good with my toughness and my health. I have not lost any health whatsoever, um, which has been great because my toughness has been so high. Um, with my abyssal, abyssal revert um, mastery, I get plus one temporary toughness after each combat, which is great, and it stacks. And I had picked up or rather, I, I purchased uh, a, a full suit of, of Brigadine armor, which gives plus three protection. Um, it's currently down to a D6 in its integrity, so I kind of need to, up, to, to repair it soon. Um, and it also does give minus 25 to um, uh, acrobatics, dodge, and stealth. So anytime I have to dodge something, I basically can't. Um, right now, I straight up cannot stealth, straight up cannot do any acrobatics, and my dodge chance is 3%. <laughs> so that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty gnarly, actually. So um, we're right in the middle of some combat um, with a Valorian Magus. And this guy has been causing me a lot of trouble, mostly because his his armor on all his pieces, which means that my slashing weapon um, cannot add a plus one to the roll. And basically, if I don't get a five to a six on any of my D6s, I'm not doing any damage to it. Um, so I need to do a critical hit, which doubles my dice, so doubles my possibility of doing damage um or i need to do magic but magic his magic resistance is pretty high so i've been resistant to doing any of this 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 uh valorian magus guy is pretty brutal it's been a lot of fun to fight though um and right now um i think it, it's it is its turn so i'm gonna use these brown dice for my enemy and the white dice for my character. Um, so, welcome back everybody to Kernathalus. And we are currently in this room right here. And again, as a reminder, the layout of the room, of the dungeon is just all aesthetics. And it's just more of a flow of where you've been and mechanically if you need to backtrack uh, and roll for tension and such and use up your light sources. But for the most part, you got a 25% chance that it's going to be a corridor, 75% chance that it's a room, and there's only those are the only two things that actually matter when it comes to the mechanics of this space. The shape is just for aesthetics. So let's get back to the combat itself. As a reminder, I'm going to have to, I think during combat, um, I don't have any active n negatives right now. So... We're going to roll to see what the what it does first. All of his stuff is magic, which means the only defensive roll I can do is dodge, unless uh, it says otherwise. So I think that you dodge first, and then if you get hit, you do a magic resistance. Um, and that, I think, uh, and unless there's other effects in the action itself, which I know it's off on, on the side here. Um, yeah, so these actions here, if it says physical, you can use your various uh, 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 what, uh, weapon skills to parry and such like that. Uh, if it's a magical skill, I think you can only do a dodge action to get out of the way of that magical attack, or you have to, um, or it might explicitly say something else. Um, but first, let's see what... Uh, what it does, um, it does a 56 on its combat skill, which is a failure, but it was going to do a magical attack, and so the only thing I can do is dodge. So if I, if it fails on hitting me, right, I will do a dodge, and if I roll a 3 or lower on this, 
I can succeed on the the defensive move. That's how I've been doing it. If that's wrong, then, you know, I might learn something down the road. All right, I got 70, so I do not success successfully gain a defensive move. Now it's back to my turn. So I roll the a critical uh, or the hit location die plus um, my attack and their defense roll. And so I have a bladed weapon skill of 66 plus where they attacking, so 76 plus the plus five bastard sword speed. So that is 76 and then 81. So I need an 81 or lower. And preferably I want a higher number. Their combat skill is only 30. And that's why I've been wanting, that's why I've been keeping with the combat skill uh, because they rarely are able to defend. My main thing is that I've been unable to roll higher than to roll high enough to do more than one damage. And they have one armor. All right, so I got 50, which is great. And they got 83, so they definitely fail on their their defense. And we hit them in five, which for a humanoid is the right, is the left leg. Uh, we weren't aiming for it. And the only thing that really matters is if we hit the head, which is a 19 and 20 on this. It's the only thing I really care about. 19 and 20. And then I roll my d6. I roll a one. Now, because um, it, I am using my slashing weapon, my slashing weapon can normally add plus one to the damage, but it only adds plus one if, it's, if it hits something that is not armored. So one plus zero is one, and one on the damage roll thing is zero damage. So I hit him, but nothing happens, which really is how this fight's been going. Um, I would like a, a, a round tracker. I think I'm going to make a round tracker too, just to kind of move, move like a marker, like rounds, stuff like that. Um, I also could just use a D12 or something like that as well, but I can't be bothered. I know some things matter when it comes to rounds in the game, but, uh, because, and I've also noticed that exploring is one phase and then the combat is another phase. This game basically has two modes. The exploration phase of interacting with the world, which is usually events, and the tension die um, and camping and stuff, which are all fun and pretty intuitive. Then there's the combat, a whole different sort of sub-game. And uh, I'm starting to learn that combat is kind of hard to keep track of um mostly there's a lot of things up in the air so the more you know little things i have stuff that i can like look at and remind me like right now i have deal 200 slashing damage and i've only been able to hit this guy for three damage so far so i have to keep track of that i've done three damage three slashing damage on this guy so now it's my turn um I think it is. I talked a lot. Well, if it... No, it's his turn. Got it. Let's see what he does. 50. Well, this combat skill is 40 because he's attacking. Um, so that is a fail. And um, let's roll a 3 or less on my supposed dodge. If I've been doing that wrong, someone can you know, let me know. That's fine. Um, I've been doing it like this because the only way to to be defensive against magic is to dodge the magic. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, so I fail on that. He fails on that. So now it's my turn. Let's uh, roll hit location and I attack. So they got 49, 46, which fails. And we got 77, which uh, I've already marked this to be improved soon. So... Um, but we critically hit, which means it is a critical success. So which means that we roll two of my damage dice, which for me is a, is a d6, so two d6s. A six and a one, so I don't increase this. Um, thir yeah. So a critical success does not bypass armor for the sake of the slashing weapon bonus for the bastard sword. So this six 
is still just a six, but I believe a six is, uh, yeah, it is two points of damage plus this, so that's zero. So two points of damage minus one armor uh, is one point of damage. Even that critical success was just one point of damage. So he goes from five to four. Five to four. Now, now it's its turn. It does a 90, so it definitely fails. Let's see if we get three or lower. We don't on the dodge. Now I have some abilities here. It's magic resistance is pretty high, but I kind of want to add some damage to my to my attack. So I'm going to spend an action to yes, that's that's what I want to do. I'm going to spend an action. So I'm going to bypass my turn basically to basically I I'm going to use hellish weapon from my abyssal reaver mastery. And I'm gonna expend five aether, so I can do this basically for two turns. Um, uh, so I'm down to five now. Um, so for two attacks, I'll be able to add a d6 infernal damage. So that's gonna be this die here for what for when I attack. All right, um, and that's my turn. And let's roll to see what he does. Uh, Forty-one. Uh, combat skill is 40, so that fails again. He's not really hitting me very much, which is good. I got 21 on the dodge, which still fails. Uh, my dodge is at is at 28, but because I'm wearing my full brigadine armor, I get minus 25 on the the dodge action. So I just I can barely dodge at all. Um, but I like to roll for it in case I get a critical success or failure so I can at least mark it for improvement. Um, so fails that, but now it is our turn and we're going to roll to see the hit first. Ooh, we got a five, which is not great because if they roll uh, anything lower than 30 that's above a five, that would suck. 29. Oh, that's so frustrating because basically the damage that would be doing, I think, I think this, this Aether, the five Aether that I'm spending is a sustain, which I believe, unless I, I've been reading the rules wrong, it's every turn, as long as you first cast it, you got to spend five more. So even though I, I wasted a turn because I couldn't even hit the guy. So I wasted five Aether to do basically no extra damage. Uh, because he he succeeded on his defensive roll better than I could get through with my weapon. So he's going to roll a d10 on the defensive move. And he rolled a 10. So your next attack doesn't suffer the usual... So they are obligated to target a weak spot. So because he's an NPC, he has to target my head, which is a minus 30 to its attack. So its combat skill is 30. And it gets a minus 30. So, what does that mean? Oh, wait, wait, wait. On his attack. So he needs to roll a 10 or lower. Because, again, when you are the attacker, you get plus 10 on your combat skill. So, he is going to go, and he, he needs to roll a 10. And he does not. And we're going to try to dodge that unsuccessful shoot of a, met, of a, of a death bolt. And I got a four, which is not what I need. I need a three or lower. So even though I almost uh, success successfully got a, a dodge defensive move, uh, it just didn't quite work out. Okay, now it is my turn. I'm going to sustain that aether. So now we're at zero. So this is the last turn I can use my plus d6 infernal damage but let's just see if I even hit 59 I definitely do because my bladed weapon skill is uh, currently with all the modifiers uh, 76 plus 5 is 81 so it's 81 right now and I got it so 59 uh, this hit doesn't really matter because he has armor all over his body Let's see. 
he cannot, unless, the only way that he can beat my successful combat maneuver here is if he critically succeeds on his defensive skill. Um, so right now it's just a 30. Yeah, I got 65. Okay, so um, he fails. So I'm going to do a 2, 1d6 non-magical, and this one is infernal damage. Um, and I believe this infernal damage is, um, is, it's not, it is not magical damage, I don't think. Um, yes, wait. It, 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 it is put on the weapon, so I think it's still going to be physical damage. So it's still going to be affected by the armor. So I'm going to roll for damage here. Oh, oh that's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. Even though I spent 10, <laughs> 10 Aether to increase my odds, I still roll like crap, and I don't do any damage. The 2 is only 1 damage. And this one was the infernal damage, which is just one, which is zero. It doesn't do any damage. So the, of course, the Valorian Magus is just resistant to being hurt. Um, this has a, been a long drag out fight. He's still at four health. Um, he hasn't really done much to me either, but we'll see. Let's see what he does. Uh, 57. Uh, fails, and let's see if we can't dodge with a three. Nope, 79. So we're like trading blows back and forth, right? He's casting these magical spells, uh, but they're going wide, mostly probably because I'm also hitting him, but not doing a lot of damage to him, so they're probably kind of stunning him a little bit, and that's kind of how I'm envisioning the, the, the combat dance, if you will. Okay, so it's my turn. Let's roll. I got a 63. I definitely succeed. That's pretty high. And let us see what... Oops, we don't need the D6 for him. Let's see. He got 89. He definitely fails his defense. Let's see how much damage. I need a 4 or higher just to do damage. Uh, yeah, a 2 or... No, I need a 5 or higher. A 6. Yes. So that does 1 point of damage total the two from the damage table minus his armor minus so he's down to three Ugh, this is a brutal fight now it's his turn let's see what he does oh he does nines or nine so he definitely does he's attempting to do eldritch enfeeblement the valerian magus targets a creature and attempts to weaken its magical and physical capabilities the target has disadvantage on its next attack roll or skill check as its vitality is drained by the Magus Curse. So, this is a magical attack that is trying to drain my vitality. Um, and this is where I'm... This is There is no mark here, so I could dodge this. But I, it's probably magic resistance. I think if you fail the dodge, you have to resist the magic. This seems like a double... Like two chances to not get hurt with magic versus with the... Well, magic resistance is kind of like magic armor. And armor is the thing that reduces the... the um, the What's it called? In, not integrity. The protection is what reduces physical armor. I, I'm going to have to look that up real quick on, on the fly because I want to double check. Um, magic attacks. W w magic resistance. I'm going to look up magic resistance, which I know is part of the early pages. Uh, magic resistance. There we go. This represents your character's ability to resist the effects of magic directed toward them. It is a crucial element to any character's survival, so stacking up, blah, 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 is a recommended fight. Magic resistance works as a skill, meaning that its score goes, yep, new characters start with 20 points in magic resistance. 
So I think I'm making a magic resistance roll on this guy. Yeah. So I'm making a magic resistance. So it's 54. So my, my, my magic resistance is 34. And then I add 20 because of my, because of my gloves. And my mastery is plenty. Right. So I started with 20. I've added four, you know, through uh, leveling up and such. And then I added 10 because of the magic resistance. So 24 to 34. And then because it's an item and not a mastery, that's why I have it marked as uh, 54 separate. Okay. It doesn't matter how... Anyway, I need to roll 54 or lower, uh, which is pretty good. 54, 57. Well, you know, that kind of sucks. So we I have disadvantage on its next attack roll or skill check as its vitality is drained. Okay, so that's all that happens. Okay, I have disadvantage. So now I have to make my roll the worst it can be. So it is now our turn, though, and we get 81 is our weapon attack. Um, so let us try to do that. Well, 81, so our tech, technically is 89, but it's going to be 98 is what we got. So we fail. Uh, let's see if it succeeds in its uh, defense. 20. Of course it does. So let's see what it does. 9 defensive roll um two health and oh no it recovers health oh man so it gets a bit of toughness back or a bit of health back so it goes from three back to five and this is what i'm saying about certain enemies uh is just back and forth back and forth combat is its own thing i've spent a lot of time talking here too but i've also been playing and it's been about 20 minutes or so already. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, maybe a little bit longer, but... Mm. Okay, and this has just been one combat. This is ridiculous. Okay, so that was my attempt at attacking. It successfully defended. Now it is its turn to see what it does, what it attempts to do. 25, okay, it finally actually hits something. It hits me with a apparition summoning. Channels its dark powers to summon a ghastly apparition. All characters must make a resolve check or become frightened. Okay. So it's it, it's magical. So the thing that we need to do is a resolve check. So 20. So we need to roll a 20 or become frightened for D4 rounds, which is awful. Okay. So we, a resolve is 20. Ew. 58. That we fail. So we are now... Um, we are now frightened for two turns. So I have frightened here. Uh, minus 20 to all checks. And we do get to start our next turn with a resolve check. But for two turns, uh, for the next D4 rounds, for the next D4 rounds. So um, at the top, of, basically for my next two turns, I, I'll have minus 20. Unless I can successfully pass a resolve check the beginning of the turn okay so uh that's what he does and then we are going to try so we get minus 20 on this so we're 81 minus 20 is 61 so 61 is our current target we got 51 so we did succeed and we are hitting the again i'm not really too worried about the uh, body part since armor is all over the place the I'm only really concerned about hitting in its head, which is 19 and 20. So we got 51. So we succeed. Let's see. The ult, again, uh, my combat skill is much higher than his combat skill. So they just need to roll critical, which they don't. Um, so we we will roll a decent. And I need a 5 or 6. So a 4, unfortunately, is still just one point of damage. Um, so... Does it bounces off of the armor, and that's really unfortunate. So now it's its turn. And 82. 
success uh, uh, fails and let I can't so minus 20 to my my um, my my dodge because it is a bolt of necrotic energy hurls at the target so it's a dodge so it's three right now minus 20 is negative 17 so I can't even dodge that so I can't even make a defensive move roll at all so now it's my turn so I'm going to move this to a one to remind me so I have minus 20 still let's see neither 19 or 20 seven don't matter so 59 which I believe is still good because it's 81 to 61 so we barely got it so 81 or 59 is great so we he needs to not get a critical defense which he does not because remember uh we both succeeded in our attempts he succeeded underneath his combat skill i succeeded under my modified combat skill and because of that the next thing to do is to check who's the higher of the two who succeeded I am. I got 59 and he got 8. And so that's why rolling high is great uh, underneath your, your combat skill. And it becomes easy to remember that as you keep playing. And so I succeed in hitting. Let's roll a 5, please. Oh, 1. Oh, this is so frustrating. So I fail at that. But, um, oh, I f well... It doesn't really matter. I forgot to do a resolve check at the beginning of that turn, but now I'm no longer uh, frightened. It is its turn. It does eight. So it succeeds on its apparition summoning. It's going to try to turn me uh, frightened. So I need to make a resolve check. Oh, I'm going to be frightened again. Uh, 48. So I fail. So I'm frightened again. <laughs> Jeez. Four, three turns this turn. Nice. Okay, great. Wonderful. All right. I am minus 20 on my bladed weapon skill here. Uh, 98. So definitely fail on that. Let's see if they succeed 47 on their combat skill. They do not. So did not need to worry about that turn. Let's see what it does. 25 succeeds on its combat skill and it, it's attempting to death bolt me with a d8 necrotic damage on a hit and that is a dodge i believe so we're going to try to dodge but we can't so now we're going to be hit by necrotic damage so i need to make a magic resistance roll 42 minus 20 is oh man so we would have succeeded that magic resistance, but minus 20 is 34. So we are unfortunately um, not going to succeed that. So we take D8 necrotic damage. And because this is magic, armor is not affected or is included in the reduction of damage. So D8 rolls a 7, which is for me, 7 is 2 points of damage. Yuck. All right, so we go from 25. It's funny, all this combat, and I have not really lost anything. We went 25 to 23. Um, yeah, our my toughness is pretty high. 28 is max toughness right now. All right, so hits me. Now let's make a resolve check. 35 is over 20, so that we got two more rounds of being frightened. Minus 20 on this attack. I got a 10, which is great, but not great uh, for um, it potentially defending well. 50. So, did not defend well, so I definitely hit. Um, yeah, three. One point of damage. Doesn't go through because of the armor. Um, and I have no Aether left. Oh, this is a pain in the ass. See, I want the 50 XP. Um, oh, you know what? I might do the cracked monocle because the resolve is 20 and I can do 3d10 psychic damage, which would bypass armor. Okay, 
I might actually utilize this because I can't the anyway it's turn it's turn let's see what it does 90 definitely misses um, and let's I can't even attempt to dodge um, so um, my turn to attack oops my turn to attack uh, 21 succeeds even with the minus 20 uh, I that was cocked 16 okay so 21 succeeds and uh, six succeeds but I'm higher so I'm going to roll a five uh, plus oh yeah five which is two points of damage so it goes down back down to four where it was a long time ago oh my lord so I'm I'm wondering if I'm missing something here but I guess not okay so only one more turn left all right let's see what it does 98 misses and I can't even attempt to dodge so my, let's do my resolve first I got 86 so I failed on on the resolve the free resolve and then I'm going to attack uh, with a minus 20. Oh, it's a natural 20. I got 61. No, okay, so... Oh, in fact, I wait, wait. I think this works. Plus 10 is 76. Plus 5 with the bastard sword speed is 81. Minus 20 is 61. Oh, yes, that's awesome. And I got a 20, which is a critical hit. Um... I think the only way that he can win is a critical success he got 41 so no so we critically hit which means that we do 2d6 of slashing damage okay finally finally so the three is one point and the five is two points so we're doing three points of damage minus the one armor that he has um, and so we're doing two points of damage, finally, down to two. And after this, I'm no longer frightened. Wow. Okay. Let's, let's go back to him. He goes a nine, so he's about to succeed in doing the, the frightening thing again. It's like the only thing he does is make it impossible for me to hit him. But then eventually, he does a 33% chance of hitting me with actual damage. This fight is ridiculous. <laughs> this is probably the longest fight I think I've ever had so far. Okay. Um, all right. So we need to... Um, this is the Frightened Resolve check. So Resolve 20. 58. Fail. So now we're... Now we're frightened again. <laughs> we're, we're frightened for three rounds. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Okay, the longest fight in the world is it is is wild. Okay, so I think I'm going to. I have no more ether. I can't utilize my magic weapon. You know what? I'm gonna burn this cracked monocle. This is a fragment. And as an action, I can make a resolve check. And if I do hit, I'm going to kill it. Like, I, I really, really, really want to just try to get rid of this guy. So unfortunately, these fragments are really cool magic things. Think of them as, like, uh, scrolls in s traditional... Um, uh, uh, traditional uh, fantasy games. But I like how how he describes fragments as they, they are useful items with powerful magic in them, but once the magic is expelled, the item crumbles to dust and turns to nothing. So effectively, they are one-term, one-time use items. Um, and I have one more left, and I have a cracked monocle, which as for in, I can spend one action to make a resolve check, and if I do, I can do 3d10 psychic damage. I might very well even fail this, but that's fine. Resolve. 20. 
26. So I spent the action, I've utilized this thing and I failed to use the item. Now I'm pretty sure that even if you fail the item, the item is expended. Um, again, I don't know if that's 100% true, but the idea is that I'm trying to use the item for my, yeah. Anyway, um, oh, I forgot to make a resolve check for this. Oh, yeah, let's, let's retroactively see if I can't do that. 24, which I fail, so it doesn't matter. And that was my turn. Um, and uh, let us see what it does. 41 fails on its combat, which was 40 at the time. And let's, I can't even attempt to dodge. So two, two more turns. We're going to roll. This combat has been wild. All right, 27, definitely succeed on my attack. I meant to do a resolve first. All right, 27 was my attack, but let's see if I can, 26 was my resolve. So I do succeed in my attack. What's theirs? 83, they fail. So let's see where I hit and for how much. You see this? You see this one? You see that? Uh, so 15% chance, 15% chance. I've been rolling so many ones. All right, now only one more turn left to be frightened. Let's see what it does. Uh, 43 is over its combat skill. Can't attempt to dodge because I'm frightened. Now it's my turn. Let's see if I hit. Ah, oh, yes, 12. That sucks because it's probably going to roll just high enough. 66. <gasps> it critically failed, which means I immediately hit. Um, it's going to fumble. Three. Fumble for it is... Uh, oh. If you're not wielding weapon, you're... Okay, so its next attack is a minus 20, which is great. Which means the combat skill will be... Uh, it would need to be a 20 or lo lower to hit okay so we hit and let us roll damage okay if i was wearing my glasses i would take my glasses again <sighs> this is this is getting really frustrating to be very honest i don't and i'm all out of aether it's not doing hardly any damage to me I'm just frightened, so I get minus 20 to all my rolls, so it's hard to hit it, and I keep rolling really low, and it has armor on all its body parts. The only way to succeed is to roll a 19 or 20, which is a 10% chance. So I guess I really am banking on getting a critical hit. That's basically how this, this, that's how this particular combat is going to end. Um, but it gets minus 20 on this roll, so it needs a 20 or higher or lower. 44. That is a critical fail. So I immediately succeed on a defensive roll, no matter what I have rolled before. Uh, so three. Defensive roll is your opponent receives bleeding. Well, it doesn't really matter. Bleeding only affects each... Tar each... Um, each... Uh, it's not so poison is each round bleeding is each room um and then after combat poison becomes each room as well um i haven't found bleeding meaning anything different than each room minus one um toughness so uh giving bleeding to an opponent doesn't really do anything um so that is unfortunate and I don't think that it it applies damage right away um, because bleeding in of itself uh, let's see bleeding the various conditions um, hold on or are the conditions bleeding yeah um, a bleeding character receives an amount of damage determined by the effects in 
intensity until the condition is removed. This is a commutative condition, so while initially it will seem harmless, yep, yep. so if the bleeding damages three, it means, yep, okay. So we get bleeding one, so it does take one damage. Um, per, okay, 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 so, so it does take one damage right away, thankfully. Um, and it's bleeding, so that is direct... Wait, it was at two, so now it's at one. Okay. So that was our defensive roll. And now uh, it's our turn. We get a resolve. I'm going to do a resolve check first. I'm, I remembered. 92, fail. Um, so minus 20 on this attack. Uh, 57, which is... Don't think... Wait. Uh, 81 minus 20 is 61. Good enough. Let's see where I hit and for how much. Uh, <clears throat> that's a one. Again. Ah! I'm no longer frightened, though. Yep. I I'm, I'm, might as well just keep this here, because I'm probably going to be frightened soon enough. All right. Let's see what it does. Uh, 84 misses, so uh, I can attempt to, to dodge. And 95. Nope. Okay. So I am going to try to hit it in its face. I'm going to roll all four dice. Actually, all of these dice. <laughs> it rolls a 70. It definitely fails. I rolled an 88. Oh, my Lord. Okay. All right. Well, if I wasn't already, you know, marked that off, I can. But 88 is unfortunately above an 81. So that is a critical fumble. Um, and that means that they get a automatic success on their defensive roll. So I'm going to roll. So this is my fumble, and this is their defense. They get to heal two health. Oh, my Lord. So now they're up to three. <laughs> they're up to three. Holy crap. And me, I fumble the ten. Manage to hurt yourself badly with your own weapon, you receive a critical hit. Well, critical hit with my own weapon. Um, thankfully, I, I do need to see wh where I hit myself. 15, which is arm, which I'm protected. So, critical hit. I have... It's funny, I haven't needed to check my armor this fight, but now because I hit myself, I'm doing, I'm doing damage. Three and three, um, so three and three is just one and one. So I do two points of damage, which does not hit me because I have three protection. So, uh, yeah, I hit myself and I nick my armor and it's really annoying. Um, and that was my, that was my attack. <laughs> and it got to do, it got to heal while I hit myself. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that great? It was down to one health. Now, let's see what it, it does. Uh, 24 is definitely lower. That was a 24. Is definitely lower than the 30, or rather the 40 that is required. Um, and it's doing the death bolt. So we're going to do a dodge to try to dodge out of the way. Uh, we need a 3. At 33, I critically fail. Ah, <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> this... <laughs> so, just point of order. I was playing this fight probably 10 to 15 minutes before I started recording. And I know I'm talking and I am pausing, you know, and not continually rolling a bunch of dice. But if I was doing this by myself, this would have been an, an additional maybe... 30 to 40 minutes of me just rolling dice. Um, I can tell by my thing here, I'm almost at full hour already, and I'm doing this one fight. But it's like this weird back and forth of him unable to hit me and me unable to hit him. It's really frustrating. So I critically failed on a... a the... Um, dodge. So it hits me, um, so I, so I need to fumble for 
random item from your belt breaks. And well, I don't have a belt, so thankfully that's not really that bad. Now, when you critically fail a dodge attack from the uh, from a magical attack, I assume it automatically hits. It just it makes sense to me if you critically fail. I know the fumble thing is supposed to be extra things, but I can't resist this magic now. That's that's how I've been ruling it. Let's roll a d8 to see how much necrotic damage. It rolls a seven, yikes, which is two points of damage directly to me, not through my armor. So it's done more consistent damage to me than I've done a total of, well, I've done a lot of damage actually to it. I gotta remember uh, 23, 20, 21, 21 I think. Okay, I've done a total of, yeah, I've done like 10 slashing damage to it, and it's at three. I need to mark that I've done 10 more slashing damage because of my personal goal. I'm at 49 slashing damage right now, so I got to keep track of that. Okay, so now it's my turn. Oh my lord, this is, uh, I'm going to roll all these dice all at once because things 37 fails on its defense i definitely hit it with a with that was an eight that was supposed to be yeah that was an eight Arr! wow wow okay all i need is a is uh that's so frustrating okay well you know lovely day Lovely day, lovely day. And here I thought I was going to get some, uh, uh, quite a few rooms in and talk about more of the, the game mechanics and stuff, but here we are. Um, <laughs> 78 fails on that. I can attempt to dodge. 15 fail. So um, let me... Uh, Roll again. All right. Come on. Come on. Uh, 65. I succeed. And I do... Uh, 24. Uh, I do... Ah, one point of damage. Doesn't go through. Because if it's one point, point of armor. Okay. You know what? I, I'm going to target its head next time okay yeah i'm gonna target its head next time uh 40 no 84 fails uh let's try to dodge through three nope don't all right i'm gonna target its head so i get minus 30 to this roll so it's gonna be 81 minus 30 is 51 i need a 51 or higher 51 or higher or lower yes i got a 10 and I get a critical hit. I don't know why I'm rolling this. I was aiming for the head. Now that's one die. And I need another die. Uh, let's use this one. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> one. Plus one. Or zero. Plus one. <laughs> Even a critical hit on the head. And the armor has all body parts. So all the entire... That's why I can't seem to break through. And even though it's just a one armor... Oh my lord. I just need a five. I just need a five on those dice. Wow, this is brutal. Alright. 67. It fails. I'm going to attempt to dodge. Which I don't... I Yeah, I just need to... Yeah, okay. My turn. Let's do this whole thing all over again. 41, I succeed. Thank God. Okay, that's going to do one point of damage if if I succeed. All right, let's see if it... 88, it critically fails. So it's going to fumble. Three. Uh, you must repair it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, its next attack is minus 20. All right, so I do two points of damage, 
rolls over into um, its its armor, um, and then does one point of damage. So I'm at 50 points of slashing. I'm doing so little damage over so long of a time, I might as well write down every time I do some damage on my personal goal there. Okay, it, it's its turn. Let's see what it does. 97 fails. Let's uh, do my, hopefully, the only way I can do this is critically succeed. Uh, one. Oh my god. I successfully dodge it and do a defensive move. So let's roll a defensive move. Oh my god. Four. Uh, if you were prone, nope, otherwise your next attack receives plus ten. Sweet. Plus ten, which is fine, I guess. Uh, which means it's 91. So I need a 91 on my attack. All right. 91. 57. Okay, so I definitely do that. It gets 24. It fails. All right. So it doesn't matter because it's only 1920 is what I want. Four, which is still just one point of damage. <sighs> okay. It's officially been an hour since I've been recording. And I have yet to kill this one enemy. I've played, I've sat down at this table for one enemy. I'm going to um, probably end the video here. I will continue off camera because I really don't want to drag this on. This has kind of been a wash. Um, <laughs> and if you have seen this particular moment of time in this video... And if, if you care to comment or if you care to share, all I want you to do is say armor is a pain in the ass. <laughs> That's it. Armor is a pain in the ass. But um, this will go up and uh, it may be interesting to some people it may be boring is all get out for probably a lot but this was my journey for today and i'm not even done <laughs> so but until next time folks i'll see you on the flip side peace <laughs>